Hi, I'm Stephen with AlbertaUrbanGarden.ca. When building a raised bed out of wood, people often recommend avoiding pressure treated woods, citing concerns over the preservatives used. So on this month's installment of testing garden assumptions, I thought I'd put this to the test. Dead wood, if left to the elements, will decompose. If the wood has been used in a raised bed, it is probably not preferable to have the bed decay too quickly. There is more than one variety of wood that will help prolong the decay process. You can use things like hardwoods or cedars, but often in a lot of areas, these are very expensive woods. More commonly, what you can do is you can find a local wood and it gets treated with preservatives and this is commonly referred to as a pressure treated wood. In recent decades, the three most common treatment processes include creosol, chromated copper arsenate or CCA, and alkaline copper quaternary or ACQ. Both creosol and CCA were abandoned in 2003 voluntarily by industry in North America for sale to the general public. This was done as there were concerns over the hazards of hydrocarbons and heavy metals used to preserve the wood. Our hypothesis today is that if you use treated wood in your garden, it may pose a risk. The most common pressure treated wood that you can find in most big box stores is ACQ treated lumber. ACQ uses a copper uh, solution along with an accompanying biocide. So today, let's take a look at the biocide and the copper to see if they pose a risk. Biocides are any chemical or microorganism that deter harmful organisms. Biocides are used in medicines, agriculture, and industries such as forestry. The most common biocide that's used in pressure treated woods is DDAC. It's also commonly used to sterilize surgical instruments and it's used in the restaurant industry. When testing for leaching in an extreme environment, researchers showed leaching results into the environment between 0.19 and 0.22%, well below the industry allowable standard of 4%. These extreme conditions were designed to facilitate leaching and are highly unlikely to be replicated in your backyard garden. So you are not likely to get exposed through contact with the soil, but through simple physical contact with your skin. This exposure is similar to the exposure one would get walking on a deck or using a handrail made of the same material. Copper is an essential element for plant growth and for human life. However, as with anything in high enough concentrations, it can become toxic. In order to see if the copper is leaching out of the treated lumber that is in contact with the soil, I sent in soil samples to Maxim Analytics. The first set of samples had been in contact with treated lumber for three years and nine years respectively. In order to understand if there's any leaching going on at home, I have also sent in control samples of soil from the same beds, however, further away from the treated lumber. All the samples we tested were tested for total metals. The results we got represent both the bioavailable and unavailable forms of copper. If the hypothesis is correct, we should see higher concentrations of copper that is found in the soil that is in contact with the pressure treated wood when compared to the control. We'll be using an RPD analysis for this. For it to be harmful, those concentrations would also need to be present at toxic levels. The copper analysis showed that the soil that was in contact for three years had a slightly higher number when compared to control. However, the treated sample that was in contact for nine years was within statistical variances when compared. The results of the three year samples may be a result of simple chance or represent minor leaching into the soil around it. In no case did the results exceed regulatory criteria. In Canada, the Canadian Council of the Ministers of Environment set the residential guideline for 100 milligrams per kilogram in soil. The same research paper that looked at the leaching of biocides found that treated lumber did release low levels of copper, but again, not exceeding regulatory criteria. Although these materials are harmful to beneficial organisms within our soil, the risk is limited as they don't leach very far and likely don't impact the communities significantly. In conclusion for this hypothesis, there's evidence to suggest the risk is very low, however, not completely eliminated. If you are looking to use pressure treated wood to build a garden bed, what I would suggest is taking some time to research the issue so that you can make an informed decision. Thank you very much for joining me today. I appreciate it very much and I hope you have a fantastic day.